Yeah, Ricky was stopping back by on his way to North Carolina, coming back from Texas, dropping off some uh, hives. Yeah, I had to come in and see Lee, and I like to see his bees and see how everything works down here in, uh, you know, where Lee's at, and they're so far ahead of us, and you know, so it's it's nice to get into the bees and play with them just a little bit, and nice of Lee to let us see his uh, his setup and and be just be with him. <laughs> Check this one here out. <clears throat> I'll try to pull slow. But... That's a nice little hive. <coughs> no queen. And this one's still got two supers on it. Which I don't remember what stores they got left in here or not. So are they bringing any nectar in right now? I mean, I did see the pollen coming in. I mean, there's they something coming in, but. Yeah, they were bringing a little nectar in, I believe, off of the uh, flea bane or the, uh, oh, what's the other one? The false hawk's beard. Okay. They'll get a little bit of nectar off that. It's not a large nectar source. Right. You can see they're capping some stuff, so. Got a little bit of weight on it, not much. You can see a little cat brood in here, which I'm not running no queen excluder. Right. They got some pollen in there. You got a few, looks like a queen cup there at the bottom also. Got some more capped brood on the back. And I see the, looks like some drone brood. Drone brood, and I don't see no mites on it, so that's a good. Yeah, whenever I popped this, I believe it was last weekend, uh -huh. between the two supers, they had the drone brood. And what cracked open, I wasn't seeing no, uh, no, mites. no mites or anything. That's awesome, especially this time of year, because you really want these hives to build up yeah. good for spring. And if they ain't got no mites, then that's something less they're having to try to fight. So. Yeah. Now, the hives that I don't have supers on, when I cracked them open mm -hmm. and seen the drone brood like that and no mites, I did still vape them right. with the oxalic acid. But if i got supers on it, I don't want to vape that. Right. Just yeah. personally, I don't. Yeah. And I can see that uh, there is, that is some nectar there on top right there that come out of the frame when you just flip that one over, so. Just take a look at the bottom of all them frames. The queen cup. Mm-hmm. Think anything in it? I don't see anything in it. No royal jelly or anything. Got mm. some drone brood here. Yep. I don't see no mites on that, so that's a good sign. That's a very good sign. But this was, I believe, one of the swarms that I caught last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this might be the one that I caught at the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's the little short video that you just reposted, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. They got a pretty decent little population there. Some more drone brood. Yeah. Again, I don't see no mites on that drone brood, so that's very good. That's real good, which these, before I had these supers on, I did vape these. Okay. Well, just they, shows they've you always that. been pretty strong yeah. anyway. Just shows you that OA treatment early sure does pay off. Yeah. Now, I mean, they say you can use the OA with supers and all now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, but do I want to? Right. Now, if it got to the point where I had some supers on there and I started seeing mites, yeah, I probably would. Right. But if I had the option to pull those supers off, right. shake all the bees, bees down, out. and then vaporize, yep. I would rather do that. I think that's better, and you know, you you're not taking a chance, even though it's allowed probably now with uh, with what they're saying. It just, you know, it's just an extra precaution, right? Yeah. Let's see, this one here I don't believe was too strong the last time I went in. They were still building up. Mm -hmm. At least everything seems pretty gentle today. Yep. See, there's a lot of moisture on the inner cover yeah. in there. That's amazing, ain't it? Yeah, well, with the migratory covers, you really don't have the upper vent like you would on right. a telescope and live in a, a inner cover. you got that little notch, notch out up. in it. Right. But it does, I can see the bees there are just uh, sucking up some of that moisture. So now that's one less thing they have to go out and get, you know? Yeah. Got a decent little cluster oh, in there. Yeah, These girls are still building up. Yep. Don't see quite as much new comb and and 
cross cut them across the top between the frames. So, so yeah. far, I ain't had too much of a problem with like cross chrome cross cone between mm -hmm. any uh boxes or frames right. now yeah they draw that little bit on the bottom bar uh-huh but as far as side to side yeah i've never really had too much problem with that mm. now we'll see if we can peek into this number one hide oh here. my goodness yeah, and you might want to stand back on that babe <laughs> yeah this one here is usually the strongest one and with them being that strong they're a little more testy testy and grouchy sometimes <laughs> You know what's funny? Uh, some of your blue uh, uh, deeps right there, I've got some of the same color at the house. <laughs> Must be a very good color. Every color that I have mm -hmm. on all my hives, they're basically something to do with bees. Mm -hmm. I got a pink one somewhere. I don't know if it's out here, back mm -hmm. here in the back. Yeah. That's a uh, queen pink. <laughs> queen pink. So I figure <laughs> queen bee. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got... Is that a Pepto? Is that a Pepto? <laughs> yeah, Greg Burns? Almost, huh? <laughs> Now I got a green one they call Venom Green, so I figured be Venom. <laughs> right, right, right. Then I, my supers, I got creamed honey, honeyed yellow. Uh, okay. The only one that don't have nothing to do with bees is the blue. The blue ones. Mm -hmm. But that was my daughter's favorite color when she was little, uh, periwinkle. Yeah. Yeah, so, periwinkle. Yeah, I actually had a customer that wanted to have uh, painted periwinkle, so that's kind of cool. So that's the only one that don't have anything, I guess, doing with bees as far as the Venom right. or the Queen or honey creamed yellows. Mm -hmm. Got to be in your hair? Yeah. Okay, I'm coming. See, two hive beetles. Where's he at? Inside. Ow! Get you? Yeah, it is done. Too late. Like I said, normally this is the hive that don't like to be messed with. but And it's your biggest hive, of course. Yeah. They got this stuff propolized pretty tight. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this with three supers deep. Oh yeah. Wow, look at that. <laughs> still got plenty of capped honey in here. Yeah. So when can you take this this honey off lead uh, down here? I mean. I could take this off right, right now. now. Now this is stuff that stayed on over winter. Winter, okay. And you know, that's kind of good to leave that over winter and just take it in the spring and if your bees don't need it, then no big deal, right? Yeah. I would. I wish I would have had the time to get out of here and do it already, but with work, working right. six days a week right now, I ain't been able to get out here. Yeah. Hi, well, beetle. You know, most most beekeepers can't just be in their bees all the time. We all have jobs. It makes it really, really hard. Yep. That hat. That box is heavy. Yeah, it's got some bees in too. I hear. Got that one bee that keeps on head butting me. She wants you. And I got a habit, anytime I pick a box up, mm -hmm. I pick one edge of it up and I give it a little twist. twist. That way in case another frame below is stuck, you're not picking that Very up. Very good, yep. And then it getting jammed in there and then you're in a real bind trying yeah. to let it back down. It looks like you got some, you know, new comb being built in this hive, so that's really good. Yep. They got some good propolis. No doubt. Wow, Isn't that pretty. A little drone brood on the bottom edge yep. of it. But other than that, and that looks like a lot of light colored honey from last year yeah. with whiter wax cappings, which I didn't get to pull all of my honey last year with work. Let's see, look like a bit of drone brood underneath that where the two boxes are gonna connect. So do you like the deep and medium for your, uh, basically that's kind of like your brood nest, is that? Well, I normally try to run just like, some of them will call it a single brood chamber management, but uh -huh. they have the queen excluder between right. the deep and any supers. The only ones I run queen excluders on are my comb honey. Or comb honey, yeah. But other than that, I, I don't run queen excluders and I just stack the mediums on top and I still consider it single brood because mm -hmm. most of the time they keep all the brood down here. Right. Now they will put a little bit up in the supers every now and then, mm -hmm. but once the honey flow, <sighs> that box is heavy. Mm -hmm. 
But once the flow kicks in mm -hmm. and any brood that is up in the super start hatching out, mm -hmm. they just backfill it with honey then, with nectar. And by the time I extract, there's very little. I do see one mite right there. Yeah, one little mite, which is not yeah. bad. Has what? Say about 30 or so yeah. drone broods and yeah. I see one mite crawling. You can't beat that. That's that's still really good. That's a low percentage. Yeah, Ricky was stopping back by on his way to North Carolina, coming back from Texas, dropping off some uh, hives. Yeah, I had to come in and see Lee and I like to see his bees and see how everything works down here in, uh, you know, where Lee's at and they're so far ahead of us and, you know, so it's, it's nice to get into the bees and play with them just a little bit. And, Nice of Lee to let us see his uh, his setup and and be just be with him. Yeah, I even let Ricky watch me take two stings on the neck too. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Miss Ruth took one in the back of the head. Yeah, she took one right now. So uh, yeah. you know, Ruth, she's a she's a trooper. I I can't take the stings like the rest of them. So that's why you see me in this big old suit. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but the uh, that last time we got into was a little on the hotter side. But uh, you know, the bees look great, and you know, I enjoy beekeeping and getting in there. They, they getting better. I mean, we are running a little ahead of schedule this year, but I think our initial pollen flow is kind of slacking off a little bit right now, so they're not bringing as much in. Right. They're still bringing some, but not as much as they were. And they're starting to get a little testy because I guess you'd call it a small dirt they're about to go through, so yeah. they're getting a little protective. Right, yeah, because so. they're, they're trying to build up these the brood, and we've seen that in those hives with the drone cells and everything. So, you know, every little bit they need right now, and. You know, when the big flow finally hits, they'll be ready to just boom. Yeah. Hopefully another month and we'll start stacking more super zone. I still got some super zone here right now that's, I mean, completely packed with honey. And I need to get those pulled off, get them uh, spun out. That way I can add them back on and let them start filling them up. But we're going to get on out of here because these bees are a little bit mad at us <laughs> right now. Get around the front and try to get these suits off and cool off too. It's warming up pretty good. Yeah, and I appreciate Lee letting us come out and enjoy his, uh, his farm and see his bees. You know, it's it's nice to visit different beekeepers and seeing how they're running their hives, and it just makes me a better beekeeper. I appreciate Lee. Oh, anytime, Ricky. Yeah, appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Got stung when we was in the bee yard, and um, she uh, took a sting at the top of the head while she was videoing. Ruth's very good at taking stings; so it usually doesn't bug her. And um, uh, she got to feeling bad and started puking and was having a hard time breathing. So we thought this would be a good opportunity to let people know and realize uh, when you get those symptoms, you need to get to the hospital as quickly as possible. Ruth's in there right now, and uh, I'm sure they're going to give her an EpiPen shot. And, uh, Lee was great. And he, we rushed out and followed him to the hospital as quickly as we can, but uh, anytime you're in the bee yard, you know. It's possible anything can happen. I mean, you never know, you open a hive, there could be a snake in there I've seen people pick yeah. up. So, I mean, a bee, you don't think much of it until right. it hits. And one good word of advice, if you are having to go to the hospital and you're able to, Try to call ahead and exactly. let them know that what's going on and how far out you are. Yeah, Lee did a really good job of that. He called right up, right ahead. And when we got here, man, I tell you, they, they pulled with a wheelchair up. They took her in and they knew that she was in antiflac shock. And uh, the nurse come right out, the doctor come right out and wheeled her right in. So we haven't seen her since uh, they took her in. But again, we, we wanted to show people, you know, even even beekeepers have been beekeeping for a while. This can't happen, and yeah. be ready for it. And, uh, you know, if you got epi pins, get those there at yeah. your place. So. You had some people that I mean, the more times they get stung, it's like the more immunity they build up to it. And then you got others, the more they get stung, the worse it gets. Yeah, oh. yeah they completely go the opposite way. Me, I've I've been allergic to bees for a long time, and I've had to take Benadryl pills, and and luckily not take the epi pin shot. And uh, so, but I feel like I'm progressing, getting a little bit better, but. Ruth, uh, the last time she got it, she kind of broke out with a rash on her side, and um, it looks like she's going the opposite direction, and, and maybe, you know, getting in the bees without a full suit on would not be a possibility for her on that, so. That, and then being stung in the head with all the hair in the way, it makes it hard to get that stinger out, too, so a lot of times you get more of the venom pumped into you before you're able to get it out. Yeah, so, and that's something we didn't look at, like, we, we was in the bee yard playing with the bees, and the, you know, I didn't take the time to look for that stinger and dig it out. She went and laid down, and, and here we are. So, 
But anyway, stay tuned. We'll uh, we'll let you know uh, how this turns out here in just a few minutes. We're here with Ms. Ruth Rourke, Ricky's wife. Uh, she had a little incident at the house early in the bee yard, and she got stung by what, two bees. One or two. One or two bees. She ain't a hundred percent sure. Can't remember because of it, but it got her in the head, and she ended up having an anaphylactic reaction and took her to the hospital. And they had to give her a shot to some epinephrine. So, what were you feeling before you started, like getting there, where you knew you needed to go to the hospital? I walk from the apiary to the car, and by that time I start feeling tingling in my hands, my ears, my hands, my tongue, and then itching. And when I got to the car, I was puking, and my throat started closing up. I tried it out, and then I couldn't breathe. It was hard to breathe. So I started puking. And they, it's, it's thing me back in here, and I think they back in here, so maybe it was too. And reaction, well, Ricky had was we need to get to the hospital, but neither one of us had an epipen on us, which I need to get some. But on the way to the hospital to try to hurry up, speed up the process, I called the hospital while we were on our way there and told them what happened and how long it'd be before we got there. So when we arrived, they was already standing outside the ER door with a wheelchair waiting and knew who she was basically when they got there. And as soon as they wheeled her into the waiting area instead of check in, the doctor already come out and said it's this one with bee steam and took her straight back. Well, it's just good for people to understand and know that what the symptoms are if, if, you're, if you're feeling bad and, and every second counts to get there. It's like a heart attack. Get there as soon as you can. And, uh, you know, Miss Ruth, normally she's not allergic to bees, but we never know when it is. Beekeeping's fun, and we want to keep it fun, uh, but you need to know the symptoms if if you do get stung and things don't feel right. Go to the hospital and get it checked out. And so the doctors, it, safe and sorry. Yeah, yeah. That one time before this one was, I just saw my... Rash. Rash, but this time the doctor said that I had it all over my body yeah. after... And, uh, and then she said that from now on I have to carry it with me and everything. Yeah. So it, it was it was good we got there when we did. Uh, things could have been a whole lot worse if 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 Lee hadn't reacted with the phone call and we hadn't decided to take off when we did. So uh, we just thought we'd shoot this video and, and just help others out to remember that we love our bees, but we got to know when we got to go. Yeah, got to respect nature. Yes, sir. And then, I mean, as far as the stinger being stuck in you, you always try to get it out as quick as you can. Oh, yeah. But when it's in your hair, it, it's hard to find. You may not be able to get it out by the time that venom sac actually empties into you, and then you get a full dose. Right. Mm -hmm.